keeping it short, talking about myths. The top seven myths debunked by Coach T. Joshua here on Wellness Wednesday. <laughs> What is up, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Doing something new for you guys today. We're heading down to Eugene to pick up some computer parts to make better videos for you guys. Check this out. This gives me an hour and a half, two hours of thinking, of talking, of all the good, the bad, the mistakes, and all the whatever it needs to be what's going on in this thing up here. It's not going to mind to educate you guys. Sorry, I'm not sorry. You guys get me for an hour and a half. I would not do that to you guys. Thinking of different things that I could do that we could chat about. Talk so much. So I was thinking about doing a minute a day, you know, for a week. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. A minute a day. Seven for seven. I don't know. I don't know what that means. What's a one minute topic? I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh. That's what I should do. Got it. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. Seven for seven. The top seven myths debunked. That's what I'm going to do. Got it. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the Portland Square PDX region and everybody else joining us today. I'm glad you're here today because I have spent a minute apiece, seven days, keeping it short. Well, let's get right into it. Can you specifically target weight loss? Can you spot reduce? Can you, can you just burn fat off of the belly? Can you get rid of the butt? I no, guys, I'm sorry. The answer is no. The way your body works, burn fat in just one specific area. I know we wanted to, but we cannot. On the plus side, that also means we cannot just gain weight in one specific area either. We do want to understand the law of thermodynamics. What about calorie intake versus calories going out? For us to lose weight, we need to burn these calories. We need to use uh, glycogen as fuel. At least educate you guys. Men and women hold fat differently because of the hormonal differences. Testosterone versus estrogen. Men and women store fat differently. Men, for example, we store, we tend to store fat on the visceral side or visceral fat, which means in the chest, in the abdominal area. And women, on the other hand, tend to store fat um, in a subcutaneous, subcutaneous fat, have the sensation to store or to be stored uh, more underneath the skin. That's why women uh, are prone to cellulite. Uh, so understanding that men and women store their fat differently plays a big role. I'm sorry guys, I know the summer's around the corner, I want to get rid of that belly, all this good stuff, but unfortunately you cannot lose fat in just one area. So I think I'm going to use the phrase debunked. Alright, myth number one is debunked. You cannot burn fat in just one area. You cannot pinpoint fat in one area. You cannot spot reduce. You cannot lose fat in one area. It, it all works as a whole. Your body works together as a whole. Alright, I like that. I think, I think that'll work. Debunk these myths. Debunk all four of these myths. The pull over. I want to learn of a couple more myths. Debunk these myths so hard. Yeah, yeah. So, I am getting parts for the computer, and I got a graphics card that I don't think I need. Um, I don't really, I don't play video games, but doing enough videos for you guys, I considered it was okay. Plus, I was sold by Russell Wilson. Yes, I met Russell Wilson, but not the Russell Wilson that you guys think quarterback Seattle Seahawks. Work at Best Buy, and he was on the Geek Squad or something like that. Um, I had my mask. Don't worry, I would say, all right, we're killing time. Russell and I were chatting nice and safely, of course, and he was asking some simple workout questions or nutrition questions about what to eat uh, after your meal, your post-workout meal. And I was like, perfect time to explain. Let me go, um, what was I saying? What was I saying? When it comes down to nutrition and eating post-workout meals, it is not like we thought it was back in the day, several years ago, decades ago, where you have that anabolic state in which you have 15 to 45 minutes to consume your protein and your your, uh, your nutrients after your workout to get that muscle growth. That has not been true for a while. And there are lots of research that has proved it otherwise. It takes our body four to six hours, uh, or six to eight hours, depending on the individual actually, to digest that food that's been consumed. And more importantly, the research that has shown four to eight to all the way up to 24 hours of your protein synthesis has exponentially just skyrocketed through the roof. Not eating more, uh, not eating right after your meal. I think a lot of us have just gotten the, the this conception that you know after you're working out, you got to feel your body because you're tired. And your body, your or, your body is amazing. It is smart. It's a, a, an organism that just is phenomenal. That's why I love it so much. That's why I love it, love it, love it so much. 
so I love it. But that being said, there's a lot of misconceptions out there, which is you do not have to eat right after your meal. You don't have to rush home and squidaddle to get that 20 to 40 gram protein shake or to eat that chicken breast or to eat whatever healthiness that you're eating. As long as you're staying nutritionally uh, dense and nutritionally sound through the entire day, it's literally one of those situations where at the end of the day, it's at the end of the day, that's what matters, is as long as you're consuming the right nutrients and macros to, to fill your body. Don't stress guys, you can go ahead and work out and as long as you eat something within that 24 hours, once again, we're not fasting, we're not talking about intermittent fasting or ketosis or anything like that, that's a whole new ballpark. But it is safe for you guys to not stress and not freak out and rush home. Well, you should be home anyway right now. All right, I'm done with this. You guys know what I'm talking about. That one, my friend, is debunked. It is nice and beautiful out. It's raining, it's sprinkling, but we're Oregonians and uh, we'll still come out and we'll do our run. I'm not gonna run, I'm here to talk to you guys. But everybody out here doing their nice little runs reminds me of a little bit about stretching and uh, whether or not stretching is a good, bad thing or does stretching prevent injury or does stretching before a workout help you prevent injuries? Does stretching prevent you from injuries? Uh, yes, no, it all depends and that's what I'm gonna talk about real quick. We know that when you warm up your muscles and you stretch them out right before a workout that it's going to help the workout. However, we do not know, or at least I want to remind you guys that depending on your stretches, you can actually um, create injury. For example, if you were to do some stretches before your workout and it's a static stretch and you're gonna do a plyometric or a HIIT training, that is going to create a lot more elasticity. It's going to loosen up those muscles, which is a good thing. However, not for this type of workout. If you're gonna get on a box and start jumping and doing plyometrics and do a lot of high intensity interval training then you definitely are gonna prone yourself to more injury because of those loose muscles if you do static stretching and you really just kind of loosen up those muscles too much you're obviously gonna have more injuries or you're gonna have more chance of injury in the long run now if we were gonna do a yoga workout or a Pilates or a bar class or something very similar to that then yeah it's gonna be easier on your muscles now that they're really loose because they're gonna do slower movements greater range of motion as opposed to a higher intensity workout all right so for me to debunk this myth I have to make sure that we do know that stretching before a workout does not always prevent injury. You have to know whether or not you're going to do some static versus dynamic and are you going to take a bar or Pilates class as opposed to a Tabata or hit class. It all depends. All right guys. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. We're taking the stairs. We are taking the stairs today because I want to talk about cardio. Get a little cardio on. Guys, cardio doesn't burn fat. I'm sorry. As much as we wish it could, Cardio burns calories, and there is a difference. So that is why very, very important that we make sure that we eat properly throughout the day. If we decide because summer's around the corner, we wanna hurry up and lose weight, that running's gonna do the trick? No, in fact, if you're running and you're not properly eating right, neutralizing nutrition in your body, if you're not eating right and getting the right nutrition, your body's gonna start digging into some of that lean muscle. And if you're running and you start digging into this lean muscle, we are going to have a lot of issues, especially with the metabolism slowing down, a lower bone density, and overall weakness. So that is why it's very, very, very important that we eat healthy throughout the day and that we don't rely just on cardio. Cardio does not burn fat. Cardio does not lose weight. It helps because you're burning calories and when we're in a caloric deficit, that's when weight loss comes. That's when weight loss happens. That's when we get fancier into it, but it is burning those calories, using those calories as fuel to burn that fat for well, for fuel. So when you're trying to lose weight, don't just rely on that cardio, guys. Um, it's a matter of proper nutrition, how you use those, getting your right, your heart in the right heart rate zone, which we actually talked about a little bit ago. So make sure you're in that healthy heart zone and getting that high intensity to use fat as a stored energy source. But cardio alone does not burn those that was, that was fat. But cardio alone does not kill or burn fat. It kills and uses those calories. At first, I was going upstairs, but after a few of these, that definitely, <laughs> I got your cardio. Another little tip tap I wanna to talk to you guys about is typically for you ladies, and that is this whole misconception or this myth that lifting heavy weights or lifting free weights is going to bulk you up and get all She-Hulk and just shredded in the wrong way. No, that is not the case. It's actually quite the opposite for you ladies. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, if you intend and you work a program and you eat the right foods to specifically uh, lean muscle, all that good stuff, yes, it's possible, but it's actually quite harder for you ladies to build that lean muscle mass. You have the, you know, you actually have have hormonal birth controls it's uh, I mean you guys your body's not going to adapt Tyson ooh, 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 ooh. he saw a bird <laughs> where was I where was I uh oh time's running out um it's going to take a lot 
more work than you actually think for you to bulk up and get too crazy busy with that. Now, yes intended, you do have these programs, um, but if you go to the gym and get a dumbbell and do a couple overhead presses and be sore the next day, your body's not gonna say, oh, there, here we go, and bulk up and just get ridiculous big. You guys, you ladies, you guys bear children for goodness sakes. Your body um, knows very, very, very much what to do, what not to do, and uh, you're not gonna bulk up by just lifting a couple free weights. So that being said, ladies, uh, when the gym opens, when the gym's open back up, once you go back, go do your workouts, do them now, do your overhead presses, do it all, do it all, but you're not gonna bulk up uh, and get too crazy lifting free weights. That's a myth. That myth is debunked. All right, yeah, that myth is debunked. That myth is debunked. And good morning. Seriously, this morning's out for me. I gotta go get my coffee. I ran out of coffee, so I'm heading to the store. You're probably wondering why I'm not working out, because isn't working out in the morning supposed to be better for you? Well, to answer that question, to bust this myth, then yes and no. It all depends on your goals, guys. Uh, it's it's one of those guys where, you know, for example, if, if weight loss is one of your primary goals, then working out in a fasted state in the morning before consuming any sort of fuel is gonna be a little bit wiser. Just because of the fact that when you wake up in the morning before you start to eat, or before you, or if you are working out in the morning without consuming any fuel or anything before, you're working out in a, in a fasted state. You hear a lot of people say uh, fasted cardio. That is when your body is actually tapping into your fuel sources. You haven't eaten anything in, you know, six, eight, ten hours, so your body is, it doesn't have any fresh, fresh fuel. That doesn't make sense, but I know you guys know what I'm talking about. However, you are to consume some food uh, and then do a workout later on in the afternoon or in the evening, then you're, you know, you've got fuel that you're using right off the bat. You, It all depends on what kind of goals you're, you're shooting for. Do take in mind though, if you are fasted, you know, working out in the morning, you're gonna have more energy because you've got that fuel that you've been using and burning. But at the end of your fast before you break, if you're to work out, it's gonna do it's way more beneficial. But it the the sacrifices is you you have a loss of energy. You are depleted of energy because you use that energy out throughout the whole day. But that's that's fasting, that's a different that's a different scenario, different situation. So working out early in the morning is is better for you. It's 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 great for you, it's awesome for you. But so is working out at night, so is during the day time in the middle of the night not this morning where I'm gonna get my coffee but it is beneficial for you in different means it all depends on your goals weight loss muscle gain uh, uh, performance athletic but you also want to think about the time of the day you know put that into a factor uh, after work or before work how that's gonna fit into your busy life being your in your schedule is it beneficial for you are you gonna have more energy are you gonna get a bigger pump in the morning when you're fresh out of the bed or you know do you have to blow off some steam at night from uh, from from a long day's work so it's not true Working out in the morning is not the only best time or the most critical time or peak time for you to get the results you want. That is false. That is a lie. Therefore, that has been debunked. The camera's supposed to do it. Pop. So I'm over here trying to figure out why I'm missing a day. I've got, now that there's seven days in a week, and uh, well, well, silly me didn't realize that when I decided to come up with this, this was um, a day afterwards. So for those of you that caught that earlier, kudos for you. I'm not too sure if we did a lot about nutrition, so I wanna slam out three quick little nutrition things, because I think I can do that in less than a minute. Hey, number one, we've got, what was it, I forgot again. Eating carbs at night is bad for you, or eating carbs at night before bed is going to cause you to gain more weight. No, that is not true at all. Um, it's a matter of when you eat these carbohydrates. Kind of like when I was talking about earlier a couple days ago, I think it was Saturday or something. Uh, it comes down to how much you're eating those macronutrients throughout the day. Um, if you ate a whole bunch of carbohydrates and then the next morning you weighed in, of course you're going to weigh a little bit more. That is because overnight you've been sleeping and your body has not consumed or used that fuel or that energy for fuel um, and it's still kind of sitting there. In time, it will digest. It does take a good chunk of time for your body to digest all your food. So eating carbohydrates at night after a certain amount of time is not going to cause you to, uh, or it's not gonna help you lose weight in any specific. It all comes down to the end of the day, what carbohydrates, fats, and proteins you've taken in your body and what you have used. Second one real quick is that eliminating certain foods will allow you to lose weight faster, quicker, all that good stuff. Nope, that's not true. If, uh, let's use carb, uh, let's, use, uh, let's use bread for example. Um, if I eliminate bread, those carbohydrates, then I will lose weight. No, 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 no. You 
don't eat that bread you take that out of your body your diet you have a you have those three or four hundred calories that would normally be consumed that are no longer in that equation if you're to substitute that with something else an avocado or something of that three or four hundred equal value of caloric calories then uh then it's not going to make that difference but eliminating specific food groups does not target any certain weight loss specifically it's a matter of how many calories you're using throughout the day and how many calories you're actually using at the end once again your caloric intake versus your caloric expenditure which since we're talking about food and calories uh, and programs and diets and all that good stuff don't copy my diet don't copy his diet don't copy her diet just because he's got the six-pack abs that you want and she's got those legs that you want I'm gonna eat what she is no 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 you can't follow somebody else's food program or food diet and expect the same results that is completely completely not the case all of our bodies are different you guys know this you guys know that I know that you know this so I just really wanted to make sure I got that out of the way all right guys so you it does not matter when you eat your carbohydrates at night unless you're on a specific program but uh, eating carbohydrates at night or at a specific time is not going to cause you to um, gain more weight. Eliminating food groups entirely is not going to reduce weight in any specific means. It's a matter of that caloric intake versus out, all that good stuff. And copying or imitating other programs is not going to get you the same results. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Everybody's body's different. And so those results are going to be different as well. All right, guys, I am going to finish plopping this down, editing this off for you guys so that you guys get this on time. Um, it was fun making this video for you guys this week. It was uh, uh, really learned some stuff on narrowing it down and I hope you guys got the sense and got the, the gist of what I was going for with all these myths debunked. Of course, we got so many more, but we can save that for another time. Um, speaking of another time, let's see you guys soon. I will see you guys Friday for our workout.